Hey guys, this is Tom Bucks. Welcome to MST.TV's Ultimate Counter Guide Part 1 for June 2022. Now, Part 1, today's special guest is going to be no one, because there's actually no one that's available right now to do this with me. However, Part 2, we did secure a different special guest. It's a new special guest that you guys are all too familiar with, the Pen God. As long as nothing else comes up tomorrow, well, then we should be good. Thank God we'll be here giving the advice. And let me tell you guys something about Triff. He's an amazing dude. When it comes to like breaking down text and playtesting, he knows a lot. He's like, he's not just a pen god. Let's just say that. He's really, really good. So I'm really looking forward to him covering part two. But in today's episode of Ultimate Counter Guide, we are covering the hand traps. And let's bring everything up. So across the top, we have our matchups. We have Punk Synchro, Punk Therian, ABC Adventure Therian, and we have Branded Despia, Fuwanderese, and Sword Soul. These are some of the most popular matchups I have seen the most amount of success so far. And there's probably going to be even more. But uh, let me just talk about the first three matchups here. First of all, Punk Synchro. I'm going to be inclusive of anything that relates to Punk. I guess the Punk combos, the uh, Vampire Zombie or Zombie Vampire combos. And as for Scythe Locking, ABC Adventure Therian, the most popular build right now, is going to be the Link build. And therefore, I'm going to cover it as Link build, although it can Scythe Lock, it can play Punks. I'm just going to keep it exclusive to the one that has seen the most success, which is most of the undefeated first place regionals and even Team Samurai X1's ABC. You know what? ABC gang, you guys know I am an ABC god here myself, so uh, that's what we're going to be doing here. So that's what we're going to cover. And across the line on the left, side we have all of our hand traps i'm just kidding this is only a partial list of the hand traps uh if you guys want to see more hand traps then you're gonna have to wait till part two where we cover more because to be honest this current format a lot of the going second cards is kind of limited to just more hand traps and just the the common three board breakers so we decided to cover a couple more hand traps in that one and hopefully the pen god himself will be able to confirm some of the stuff with us all right does that sound good Okay, so down the line, we have DD Crow, Ash Blossom, Token Collector, Nibiru, Imperm Veiler, and we have Draw and Lockbird. These are some of the most popular hand traps. We've seen them in the main. I think Nibiru in the main is getting more and more popular. If you're not doing it, either your deck does not need it, or you're doing things wrong. So these are the things that we have to cover today. Make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and ding that notification bell, especially when you want to see the Pengar come on here, Triff. So, all right, let's get this started. All right, we're gonna do this column to column. Punk Synchro, this is more or less a base deck. I know the base deck pretty well, but the Synchro part and the Zombie Vampire part, it really throws us for a loop because it doesn't seem like we have enough hand traps to go all around. So starting with Punk Synchro, anything that plays Zombie Vampire, Chaos Ruler, Pepega Ruler, let's do all of this. So how good is Deed Crow? I would say it is a check dash. Do you guys know what I'm saying by check dash? It's just that it's great, sometimes and not that great other times it's like it's not that it's useless you'll find uses from time to time but i'm gonna say the most impactful thing is if they're playing scythe engine of course make sure you stop the artifact scythe especially if you play an extra deck other things that you can attempt to stop uh fairy tale snow if they mill it into the graveyard because uh you don't want to get your stuff book uh fairy tale snow i think uh chaos ruler Copega Ruler, just take it out. Don't let him get uh, Vampire Zombie. That's also a pretty big one. Um, but typically, they're going to get there. If you really want to stop them from comboing, there's also Deer Note Target. Deer Note, Deer Note targets whatever it revives, and therefore, you can definitely use this to kind of remove that target to minimize. But essentially, if DD Crow is alone, it probably won't amount to all that much. They can set up Omni Negates after all, so you're probably going to need something else to kind of back it up. Next, we have Ash Blossom Joyous Spring. Again, this is... Okay, Ash Blossom, you know, across the board for all of these decks that play Punk Engine, Therian Engine, let's just say Ash itself alone will not be that great but you still have to play it because it'll still be impactful because you're trying to minimize the amount of board that they can build i think that that should be a note that you guys know against this deck of course there's stuff that you can hit for sure uh i think the first thing that comes to mind this is the one that you're always going to be forced to throw out right away and that's going to be water enchantress 
you have to hit the water enchanters. Because if you don't hit the water enchanters, you have nothing left much to play. Unless you have like a droplet already main decked in your build, you're not going to be able to kind of go anywhere. Another really key card to hit if it does not get chain blocked. Sometimes it does get chain blocked, especially if they make it with a deer note. Deer note can be chain linked too. I'll keep five racks. All right. All right. You know, Hulk, needle fiber. You have to hit that. You let that go through, you're going to get screwed. And it is also the, one of the lines that, well, if you let it go, they're just going to keep on extending further. It, it's going to be very difficult. They're going to have everything on the board. You're not going to be able to watch the play. And you're probably going to get a scythe lock on top of that. Uh, aside from that, those are the main targets, really. Um, you can, e telly is a risky hit. Like, do you want to hit the e telly? I mean, it's 50-50. If they already have this Yammon in hand, you, it doesn't really matter. Or should you hit the Yammon? Yammon's okay, but you can also hit uh foxy tune foxy tune is another card that you can also hit that uh would probably have a bit more impact because if you sh if they are attempting to use foxy tune it might give you a little bit of a read whether or not they already have the deer note in hand that's all i'm putting out there all right uh next token collector token collector is a bit of an easy one it is conditionally it's a good card conditionally as long as you can hit the adventure engine uh you know uh, right uh, Aramis here. I think this is just a given. It's just pretty easy. The Rock. Uh, like the most hand traps here, Nibiru also falls into the category. If you have a single Nibiru, it's probably not going to do all too much. Likely going to get negated, uh, especially before the fifth summon. But if it does land, it lands super hard. And in that regards, I'll, you know, I'll put it right here. Yeah, it's pretty decent. Again, with most of the other hand traps, Imperm. Imperm, <laughs> Valor, again, all hand traps in these decks require multiple things. Although, you're just trying to minimize board. Once again, we're just trying to minimize board, but ideal targets, of course, we have... If you're going to hit some stuff, you can hit the Griffin Rider. You can hit Hulk. Yeah, keep... Uh... Sorry, my keyboard is acting up again. Uh, we are going to how we can hit this. ZM is not worth hitting. Uh, Chaos Ruler is worth hitting. You don't want them to get that mill. You can also hit uh, Zombie Vampire. Oh, I'm off screen. But you can also hit Zombie Vampire. You just don't want them to get that setup. And it usually leads to some pretty devastating boards. I don't know if I want to be on the receiving end of any of these boards. So these are pretty good. Uh, and then draw and lockbird. I think draw and lockbird is actually pretty decent. I'm not Triff. Triff doesn't really agree with this card, but I think it's pretty decent considering the amount of searches that you actually have. Like draw and lockbird, Yamin search, Sangin search. Um, it's all pretty. It's all pretty ridiculous. And there's just in the search from the right. Everything leads to some level of search, and then it also blocks the chaos ruler from adding cards. Overall, you're cutting their play short, and that's going to have long-term impacts. And that kind of covers their first run. That's already five minutes. Oh my god, this is going to take forever, guys. So overall, I guess if I were to include a little bit of text. There's a lot of searching that happens. You know, the Ziamin leads to a search. You have a Sangin that leads to a search. You have. Uh, basically, you can stop stuff uh, from, I guess, getting too out of hand uh, from, like, Chaos Ruler. There's just a ton of things that actually just end up adding cards. And there's also, like, Pot of Prosperity. There's just a ton of cards that lead to searching. So you can cut every single search off by just not letting them get there. All right, so that kind of covers for <laughs> the Punk Synchro. And if there's any deck that also includes the same engines, of course, that also applies to them as well. So for Punk Theory, and ultimately the opening play is trying to get into, you know, Zombie Vampire, dump some cards, play with other level 8s, and have maybe 3 to 4 Disruption and a couple of hand traps. And they load their hand full of hand traps thanks to the similar plays coming from Punk Synchro, which is using Chaos Ruler, Pepeka Ruler, to add it all to their hand, or dump all the necessary cards into the graveyard. This time, they want to dunk Therian cards so they can get the Therian stuff out, and they play with a little bit more Synchro, because they can now Synchro off their stuff and go into some really nasty monsters okay so ultimately dd crow once again same conditions here you're kind of 
all right not like the best deck or anything best hand trap against them but it does have some level of impact uh for instance the first thing you should note is it does play chaos ruler so you should get rid of that chaos ruler it's so it's just there to prevent the zombie vampire from coming out once zombie vampire comes out you're getting grass right Mil okay what kind of Yu-Gi-Oh card they can basically say i am a 3000 body and my combo leads to nine cards being milled into the graveyard and if they're grave centric that's not good for you and the other card is going to be Deer Note. Target, of course, you can still get rid of it because essentially it's just giving themselves a free level 8. This is the reason why the Chaos Rule is so difficult to negate with Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom never gets a chance to even touch it. Uh, if you can touch it, I mean, I would, but likely it's going to be Chain Link 1 backed by uh, right behind a Chain Link 2. So it's very unlikely. And the last thing you can hit... Okay, this one's a bit more situational, but I have seen people do this against me, and I've been playing this deck just to kind of understand it. But it does hurt from time to time. It's a pre Therian hit. So whenever that there's like something that a Therian uh, card can use, you crow that before they activate. You don't even want the body to come up. Because once they activate, if it's, if it's a regular, you're dealing with an Omni Negate that's basically free. They got it for free because you didn't take action. So this deck requires you to have active timing to stop some of the stuff that they do. All right? Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not kidding you, man. It's really, really important. Next, we're going to go to Ash Blossom, Joy of Spring. There's quite a few things to hit here. More or less, I would say you're going to need to hit... Uh, okay, if... Their opening is not ideal, and they start off with Yukio, Shirokusai, uh, then they're going to go into the Rising Carp. If you see the Rising Carp, well, hit the Rising Carp. Because uh, it summons up two monsters, those two monsters lead to Chaos Ruler, and I don't I don't think you want to be part of that equation anymore. Usually it's like they only have one e Telly and they need to combo. They go e Telly into z Ammon, z Ammon add uh, Yukio. That's the thing that they're going to add, and they're going to summon it onto the board. I don't know how that's going to be. That's something that does happen, but if you do see it, you should probably hit the fusion. The other thing is, of course, you should hit is, like, Foxy Tune. This is, like, the given. This is always the good one, and also Hulk. Hulk you should always hit, because Hulk leads to a lot of problems, all right? <laughs> uh, like, we don't want to leave it on the field, but it is what it is. If they get to summon another tuner, they're going to extend into a Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. And some of them even run Hot Red Dragon Arch uh, King Calamity, so... Be very careful. Token Collector is just utter trash because they don't do anything. Nibiru kind of falls into the same category. You need another hand trap. But if you do get that second hand trap, oh my god, it is fantastic. The whole board is dead. And uh, unlike most other decks, the recovery is not that strong unless they have, like, say, the Therian Field spell. Outside of the Therian Field spell, nothing that good. And should you Ash the Therian Field spell? It's hard to say because they could just be holding the pieces in their hand. And I think there's just way better things to hit into the Ash because you can only Ash once anyway. Um, in that regards, I don't think it's really that great. Uh, next, Imperm. I think we're just hitting the same stuff. We're hitting Zombie Vampire. We're hitting stuff like Chaos Ruler. We really just don't want them to get all those free cards. Everything they do is just a bunch of free cards, which is why Nib is always so active. And you gotta hope that there's no Omni to get. Like Punk Synchro, there could be a Griffin next to it. Therian, there could be a Regulus next to it. Like everything needs to be backed by something else. And I feel like combo is gonna be a much stronger than a control deck right now. It feels like combo is the way to go. I think everyone's kind of jumping onto like combo. I mean, mid range is branded Despia, but. You guys kind of get what I'm saying here. And of course, you can always hit Hauk. And again, this is one of those multi hand trap scenarios. What else do they run in their deck? I mean, you can imperm the Lily, I guess, Therian monsters, uh, Therian Regulus. You can use it if you draw into it, or the Lily. You just don't want them to get their cards. All right, this is a question mark. Therian cards, you can also hit them with the Imperm. It's important. It's a, it's a bit of a trade. So once again, we are in a scenario where it is all right, but not great. Like some of these are better than others. Let's put it that way. Some of these are better than others. Droll. Oh my God. If you droll them, they have a ton of search cards from the Ogre Dances, Therian Field Spell, Xiamen. There's tons of cards that would technically add a card so yeah no it's good if you can hit them like you got the Xiamen Chaos Ruler Chaos Ruler there's like a lot of stuff they can get like prevented uh, on top of that um, of 
course there is the uh, Disco Coliseum. There's just a ton of cards. Yeah, there's no, there's, it's, it's actually not bad. Once you like lock them out, it, it hurts. It hurts a lot. It makes your other hand traps even more powerful. It's kind of what I want to get to. Okay, so ABC Adventure Therian. I should know this deck like the back of my hand, but the Link build, I don't play the Link build as much. I have it built. I've played it. It's very powerful. Both decks are very similar and I'm really greedy and I don't like playing the standard, uh, but we're going to only cover the standard build. So this is not going to include scything or doing other crazy stuff. Um, so let's begin with the link build. So starting off with DD Crow, it's uh, pretty solid. Not going to lie. Uh, you have ABC pieces, water enchanters, theory and targets. Theory and targets, you have to, of course, preempt it. And usually you want to take it with the B, if anything, because the B is the one that gives you the search. And missing the search makes it very, very hard to play. And since they're not playing the synchro build, they don't have shooting riser dragon to dump the piece into the green graveyard anymore so that's why yeah they're not going to be able to get to abc if you can really just get rid of that b really essential that you don't let them resolve b multiple times because uh even the brave package can dump pieces into the grave. faithful adventure is not bad it can dump even a union driver into the grave and you re-equip it and summon it back onto the field as a body so at the very least it has that going for it so moving on uh as for ash blossom you can ash any of its starters. Ideally, you want to hit the Water Enchantress. Union Hanger is a hit or miss. Therian, like Field Spell, is also a hit or miss. But Therian Field Spell, you can technically you can read the board and then you can hit it. They have to activate it in a certain way so that you don't see what they're trying to do. Because if they start with like Faithful Adventure and then they put Therian Field Spell, it just tells you that they have a piece in their hand that he needs to ditch out. And uh, they're going to ditch out and they want to get that free summon. And if they're going to go for that free summon, you should probably hit that for yield spell but usually it's it's hard to tell ash doesn't always feel like it's correct because there's just too many things to hit which is why ash is like you need multiple hand traps ash is not going to stop everything next we have token collector if they have right of aramis here boom hit them done uh nibiru once again these decks with multiple lined up engines that have a base omni negate it's gonna be x plus check but for this one guess what you're gonna need an additional hand trap it's hard it's super hard to break through both a griffin rider and break through um the theory and regulus once they have both it's really hard like one is already annoying enough once they have two you're not going to break them with a nibiru i've even like one time i got hit by nibiru is because they burned two like two additional hand traps and then they hit me with nibiru but the problem is i summoned out abc anyway because i loaded my grave and yeah they they still lost because then on their turn i banished a card and then i tagged the pieces all back out and it was just not fun for them and i had the theory and field spell up so it was, it was hard to do anything the rock is kind of iffy for this one next we have the infinite impermanence or valor i think this one mainly covers for imperm valor is kind of mediocre in my opinion i mean you can use it to stop a griffin rider and then you can use it to drop a nibiru that's fine that's all you know all good and you can also use it paired with, a, I guess it's always going to be paired with the rock, really. If you pair with the rock, then it's good because even Appaloosa won't be able to do very much. But IP Mask Arena, you can stop it with the Imperm. You can Imperm the Baguska to get, enable your turn again. Uh, you can hit the Appaloosa. Essentially, if you just draw into it, drew into it, you should probably hold it. Uh, unless they're playing the Hulk build. If they're playing the Hulk build, you probably should hit the Hulk for sure. If you let the Hulk resolve, it's it's like previous formats Rose Dragon combo, but just a lot worse because all the pieces come out for free. They Hulk Hulk summons like Hulk Chain Link One, C Chain Link Two, C summons O B, and now the Red Rose Dragon has a free uh, monster to synchro with into a seven, which dumps the last piece. Now they have A B C and Omni to Gate. I don't think you're gonna have a good time, and you're gonna get Scythe Lock. It's not very fun. Um, but please don't do that to me at locals. I ate it once, I hated it, and I just love it to do it against other people. And against Rowan Lockbird, you just look at the Ash Blossom hit targets and you realize how many starters you need in this deck, and you'll realize, hey, yeah, Rowan Lockbird, a complete shutout. And it is, it is a complete shutout. It's very brutal if you hit me with that, and I don't even want to write anything down because just look at the Ash Blossom part, and that's exactly what you would hit. All right, halfway point. I hope you guys take a little time to check out the MST merch store at mstmerch.com where we have fantastic sleeves, over sleeves, mats, and a lot of other cool products to help you sort your collection. Check it out at mstmerch.com. And that is the one place where you can get the really, really popular white sleeves that you guys have been seeing all over Twitter. Thank you guys for your support. I'm really glad you guys love them. All right, we're halfway, and let's go into some of the more common matchups from the past that are still doing really well, starting with Branded Despia. 
uh, Brandon Despia check mark number one DD Crow. It's good enough. I'm gonna give it a check mark. I know some of you guys are like, oh, but Tom, they still get to search if you hit their tragedy, and it's true, they still get the search, but I'm gonna have to live with it. So, Branded in Red's target is ideally what we're gonna hit it for. It's the fusion prevention is more important than anything. And speaking of which, Branded Banishment is also included in there. You don't want them to get free monsters, and you definitely don't want them to get free fusions. If they start fusing away, ad libitum happens, you're dead, you're screwed, you're not gonna have your turn. And it's going to be able to dump multiple cards because it's a mid-range deck. It's getting all these combos. Think about it this way. It's like you're letting your opponent use, like, tri Revolt against you. And they get all their card effects. You know you're going in, to you're in for, like, a terrible turn the turn after. So this is kind of the same deal. You just really want to stop them from just getting their monster. Even if they get their search, it's not going to be as bad as them mirror jading you, like, twice. It's, it's just not the same, all right? Next... We have Ash Blossom. I love it when it's nice and simple. You can hit them with against a Branded Fusion and the Aluber. Even under Branded Loss, it doesn't even matter. And those are the ideal targets. Uh, Aluber, I probably would save it for only a simplified game state. Everything else, I don't really care. Hit the Branded Fusion. That's what really, really matters. Uh, I am a little scared if they don't go for Branded Fusion. Like In a late game scenario, the reason why I would hit the Aluber is uh, that they don't get a Branded in red. If they get a Branded in red, I could still die and I cannot Ash Blossom at that point. And therefore, I could lose because they can push for a lot of damage. Token Collector, uh, I believe that's um, kind of trash. Uh, oh yeah, don't forget, Guardian Chimera. You can hit, if you can hit Guardian Chimera, hit the Guardian Chimera that kind of ruins the entire purpose unfortunately it's usually going to be chain blocked by like an ad libitum or a branded or sorry a despian tragedy is it's, you're going to be screwed either way uh token collector is bad you know what let's, let's just put that for full reads as well they don't play anything that's related to tokens so yeah the, and you don't play tokens here either unless you're playing brave which is not the right build i think the brave build in this it just cuts you off for way too much the rock is bad nothing to hit infinite impermanence Okay, I'm gonna put a star here. The star means it's conditional. And that condition, uh, I'll type it out for you guys. That condition is no branded lost. Maybe I should like type in the middle. Since I, I set it to like type in the middle, but no branded lost is the key here. Otherwise, if there's no branded lost, yeah, no, this is really good. If there is no branded loss, you have full coverage. Unless, of course, they use comedy to tribute off their monster. Uh, but ideally, you can stop like Lubellion, and that means they paid cost for nothing. You can stop Mirror Jade. Okay, Mirror Jade is an if. I'm gonna Mirror Jade is an if because it just prevents you from like, getting negated. But uh, I mean, turning it off is still pretty good. But the problem is, it's gonna get fused away. It's gonna come back. You know. That, that card's gonna be pretty annoying. Uh, but stopping Lubellion's pretty important. You can stop Aluber. Uh, you can even stop Fallen of Albaz. Like, you've got a ton of stuff that you can stop with the Emperor. Basically, you can stop the entire line of additional fusions, which is also very important. Uh, Draw and Lockbird, uh, kind of bad. A lot of the cards can just directly set onto the board, making this card one of the most useless. And if you're gonna use Branded Opening, uh, to summon Aluber. Aluber is in the draw phase. Draw and Lockbird can't be active in the draw phase. That simplifies this matchup down. Fluanderees, finally, the bird deck. Uh, first of all, let's just put an X on here. DD Crow is good, not going to do anything against this deck. What am I talking about here? Yeah, it's really bad. Ash Blossom, Joy of Spring. <sighs> There's a reason why Fluanderees is pretty good, because they're really good at eating hand traps for the most part, and they have some of the best chain disruptions against hand traps two of them book of moon and the advent for adventure uh this one here is ash blossom it's it's i don't know the scenario is this there's a scenario for this they have no uh i guess no chain link to <laughs> that's the condition otherwise uh probably you should hit Eaglin, because Eaglin is the real problem. Eaglin is the real threat. Uh, outside of that, Token Collector is trash. Nibiru is trash. Look, okay, if you look at all the mainstream combo pieces, if you look at all of them right now, 
or the hand trap, sorry, you'll notice that a lot of them are mainly catered towards hitting combo decks. And that's why Flundry's not being a combo deck is not affected by a ton of this stuff. However, it doesn't mean that they're, you know, completely dodging everything. Impermanent Veiler, they're actually decent given that they don't chain a certain card. If they chain Book of Moon, it's going to dodge it. If they chain, say, um, yeah, they can just chain to ruin it. Uh, Book of Moon or Advent of Adventure. So this one's going to require something here. Uh, let's grab this star. This is called No Quick Play. Because the Quick Play lets them dodge this one just flat out. And it just makes it very difficult. But if they have no Quick Play, you can hit anything. Any bird. Any, any summon chain gets blocked. But otherwise, it's not the most ideal again we're gonna go for rabina uh eaglin for the starting plays but there's more there's more stuff that you can actually hit in this deck uh you need to turn off barrier statue that's really good this is mainly for imperm you need to turn off the barrier statue you probably want to bait um uh, the apex avian or the other big bird uh mpen these are the ones that you have to hit if you can get there. And if you get the draw and lock bird, of course, <laughs> you draw them. They don't even have that many summons. Uh, they, they just stop their summons. They can't summon. They have to perform the action to do it. It's hard, but it is very effective. All right, DD Crow, Sword Soul. Not a new matchup. In fact, this matchup more or less kind of became the same old matchup. It's just the same stuff. Is it good? It's kind of good. It's decent enough. Uh, it's mainly for 10 Yi cards. It's just for 10 Yi cards. If they open hard 10 Yi, then DD Crow is going to put in some work. Problem is, again, the 10 Yi cards. Adhara is going to add back the cards that you throw away. And it's going to let them banish cards. And if they're playing... Uh, and you know what? Not if they're playing. When they drop their Chen Ying, you're going to be feeling the real banishment there. As for Ash Blossom Joyous Spring, again, Ash is not the best card against them, but there are some stuff you can hit. Just remember it. Just remember that you can hit stuff in this deck. But the best one to hit usually is going to be the Ecclesia. Uh, incredible, since there's so many. The Incredible Ecclesia. Moye Draw is... Sometimes you're just going to have to hit. There's just not that much stuff to hit. So, uh, there's a Moye Draw. Um... If you can get to Chi Shao, you, yeah, you know, I'm going to put this on the same line, or the Chi Shao. If they go uh, use two, like, 10 Yi monsters to make make the card, uh, make the Chi Shao, then you have an opportunity to hit them with an Ash there. You also have the spell card, uh, Emergence, but I think you could probably save it for something a bit more important. I know they run two copies of Heavenly Dragon Circle, and they run two copies of, maybe, if they if they still run it, they can also run two copies of the uh, Vessel. And Vessel is a pretty decent hit. They have Vessel, and they also have Heavenly... I think Heavenly is just a bit better. Heavenly is usually an, uh, like an interactive play where they have the tribute for cost anyway. So if you hit them there, they actually just lose the monster and could actually open up the board. So Heavenly D Circle. Heavenly DC. There's actually quite a few things you can hit with an Ash. There's a lot. Token Collector, yeah, it's it's good. It's good. They, they need to play with their tokens. If they don't, they die. Uh, Nibiru, uh, let me get the red star again. We need the red star here. Nibiru is, it depends on how they open, but if Nibiru does land, it's game over. The condition of this, of this particular one, is that <laughs> they didn't start, uh, how do I put it? They didn't start with the, no long end start. There. If they didn't start with the long end, that means there's no Baron, and no Baron means it's pretty good okay so that's the condition makes sense i mean if someone starts with the long end, you're pretty screwed either way because they're gonna get a get the baron or you have double hand trap in, in, in which case you know i'm gonna include it if we have double hand trap we're good to go regardless but if there's no long end start you can still drop the rock and uh they'll they will scoop to you it's uh it's gg finally we're down to the last two and we've got uh infinite impermanence 
Infinite Impermanence, I guess you can bait out Baron. Uh, you can bait Baron. What else can you do? Stop Chi Shao. You can kind of break a board. It's more of a trade card, but it seems like Sword Soul is like has a lot of stuff kind of going against it. But okay, let's put it right here. You can use it to bait Baron. You can use it to stop Chi Shao. Negate Chen. Chen Yin. And you can even use it to do it against like uh, Qi Xing Long Yin. You can turn it off. Like that card is really annoying because uh, ideally it just becomes double. It's just two two banishes. It banishes one of your monsters and it banishes one of your spells and traps. I don't like that. You can use it. So Imperm is useful. Valor. Valor is useful. You can stop Chi Shao from searching, of course. Uh, it's usually a pretty big deal uh, if you can stop that search. That search is uh, what leads to them recovering cards. But if they can't get it, <laughs> it sucks for them. Uh, if you see, you see them set a card, then you can guess that they were probably going to extend an additional monster. Uh, but who knows? Who, who truly knows? And you can also even use to stop like a Boxia. Box Boxia stopping is like super important because Boxia is one of their biggest follow ups. So if you're able to imperm them, just it buys you the whole turn back. It, you will survive. That's what I'm trying to say. And finally, draw and Logbird against Sword Soul. Yeah, I think it's it's good enough. It's it's weird. It's weird. It, it's like it's good, but it's like not perfectly good. Because looking at a Sword Soul deck, I mean, they can go Emergence, and it depends on how they start. But okay, Draw and Lockbird. Oh, I guess for Ash Blossom, I also forgot one additional card. I'm just going to include it right now. That's got to be Pot of Desires. I completely forgot that Pot of Desires is still a thing, and that's what I was... I thought about it when we got to the Draw and Lockbird. Pot of Desires. The Dire... Pot of Desires. Okay, Pot of Desires is good. Okay, so... Okay, let's look at all the starters that they have. They have Emergence. Emergence. They have Pot of Desires. They have. That's funny. I haven't seen anyone like play DPE. You know, I have not heard DPE in so long since where they got banned. You know, it's like music to my ears, and that music is silent. Um, let's see, Pot of Desires. They, if they, those are really the only real two cards. I mean, there is a vessel. If they start with a Vessel plus Monk, if they go must Vessel Monk, then you can definitely draw them. And I think this one actually hurts a lot because uh, it stops Moye and Chi Shao from drawing. Uh, but outside of that, there's not really too, too much else that draw hits. Not to my knowledge. I can take a look. I'm just going to take a brief look at a Sword Soul deck. So, uh, yeah, that's decent enough, but that's not exactly all the targets. But then again, the deck is like super consistent. So... Uh, I think you're, it, if you did play it, it will come up. If you didn't play it, not exactly the end of the world. And I guess this kind of covers all the hand traps. Sorry for the extremely long video. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about why certain cards work, why certain cards don't work. If there's something that I probably missed or something that can be played around, leave it down in the comment section. Uh, outside of that, I can, I guess, thank you guys. And that's all I got for this video, guys. I wish I could have been a little bit more energetic and bounce some ideas off of Triff, but he's not here right now, but he will likely be here. If he's not here, probably he's busy, but you know, he did say put him in for tomorrow. So we are going to try this again tomorrow. And guys, if this isn't your first time here and you've watched multiple Ultimate Counter Guides and you still haven't subscribed, what are you doing, man? Hit that subscribe button for me. It really helps me out. And to all you Patreons out there, of course, the splites are available. If you guys are planning to play splites in the future and you want to hit the ground running, uh, to you patrons out there, uh, the proxy sheets are already available. If you didn't see your hand trap that you wanted me to talk about, well, likely gonna be in the next part because there's not a lot of cards going second. <laughs> the card pool is so small this morning because there's so many overlap and these have been filtered down to be some of the best cards to use. Uh, and so, if you guys want more hand traps like Gamma, Ghost Bell and other fun cards. That's going to be in the second part, all right? And it's going to be really, really important because we're also going to be covering cards going first to help you beat some of these matchups. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, ding that notification bell, especially when you don't want to miss the pen god giving us the goo. All right, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.